this may seem strange that we insist that in the long run, firms can only just cover costs of production. So there are two key questions that we need to answer if we're to understand why this is so. The first question is, why is it that we can't have firms making profits or firms making losses? Why do we insist that in the long run they just cover costs of production? The other question we're going to need to think about is this. If the motive of entering the market is to make profits, why would a firm stay in the market and continue producing, as our diagram suggests it would, when it's not in the long run going to make any profits at all? Is this believable? These are the two key questions that we need to answer. The answer is to be found in the assumption that we've made that there are no barriers to the entry of new firms in the long run. Let's look at the diagram where we start off with a long run price of PL where supply and demand are in equilibrium and the firm, the representative firm on the right, is just breaking even. Average revenue is just high enough to cover long run average cost. So QL is the optimum level of output at which the firm just breaks even. But now suppose that for some reason price rises to P1. Maybe demand increases. Well now we'd have a position where firms are making profits above the normal. Firms are making profits greater than sufficient to cover costs of production. But if that's true in the short run, and we saw that it might well be when we looked at our short run position, this will simply attract new firms in the long run into the market. New firms entering the market will shift the supply curve to the right. Remember that the supply curve in the short run is the sum of all the marginal cost curves in the industry when new firms enter the market, will be summing a greater number of short-run marginal costs. Supply shifts right, depressing price. And new firms will go on entering the market until the price is driven back to the point where firms can only just cover costs of production. At this point, there's no incentive for new firms to enter the market. So the reason why they're not going to make profits above the normal level in the long run is freedom of entry of new firms being attracted into the market. Now, will it always be the case that the price in the long run returns to PL that it started from? And the answer is no. It's possible that it will be like this. As new firms enter the market, we get external diseconomies of scale. New firms entering the market, for example, drive up resource prices and the cost curves of all firms begin to rise. If that's the case, the supply curve shifts to the right, depresses price, but not as far as it did in the first case, because firms are now going to be breaking even at a higher price than before because they're experiencing an upward shift in their average cost curve due to these external diseconomies. There's also the possibility of external economies. So when price rises in the short run to P1, new firms are attracted into the market. As new firms arrive, the external economies depress the average costs of firms. And so even when prices returned to PL, 
Profits are still being made. More firms enter the market and equilibrium is only restored when firms are just covering costs, but this is at a lower price than we started with. But at each example that we've looked at, what is happening is that new firms are entering the market looking for the short-run profits being made. As they come into the market, these profits are eroded away, so firms will only be able to just cover costs of production in the long run. So that's the answer to our first question. Why do we think that firms will only just cover costs because of new entries into the industry in the long run? But now we can think about the second question that we asked. Why would firms stay in a market where all they can do is just cover costs of production? The answer to this question is to be found in the economist's understanding of costs. An economist's understanding differs from the accounting understanding. Accountants are only interested in recording costs where there is some exchange of money. Economists are interested in all costs, including opportunity cost. We'll explain that in terms of an example. Imagine that you are working for a firm and you are currently earning £30,000 a year and you've decided to give up your job and to start up your own business. And at the end of the first year, you prepare a set of accounts showing you what you've achieved. So you've got sales of £200,000, but you know that this is not your profit, you've got costs. And when you've subtracted all the purchases, you've got a gross profit of £90,000. Even this, you realise, is not your profit. You have to subtract the uh, wages, the rent, the interest, and so on, so that you're left with a net profit of £30,000. But now let's have an economist look at that same trading and profit and loss account and the economist would add something to it. He would say, here are my sales, purchases, overheads and so on, but there's an additional cost that we've ignored. The opportunity cost. You gave up £30,000 of wages in order to start up this business. That's a cost. It's an opportunity cost which we should impute to the business. So if we now add in that cost, that opportunity cost, we discover that the profit that you've made in that year is actually zero. Now, are you willing to continue in business if you have a zero profit? And the answer is, there's no reason to suppose that you won't, because you're doing as well in this business as you could do somewhere else. That profit of zero still covers all costs, including your opportunity cost. So you have no incentive to go back to your old job. You are receiving enough income to cover not only the overheads, but the opportunity cost of your time and so on. That's what we're showing when we look at long-run equilibrium. That long-run cost curve has included all costs, including your opportunity cost. So if you're breaking even, you are making enough to persuade you to stay in the industry. What you are not going to do in the long run if it's a perfectly competitive industry.
is to make more than opportunity cost. New entries will see to it that any short-run profit above opportunity cost is eroded away. But you will still make enough to stay there because price covers all costs, including opportunity cost. 